Good afternoon, my name is Tristan Lowe and welcome to the Over 40s Fitness Podcast. Uh, just trying something different today, messing around with our cameras and we're looking at a side profile uh, technique which I've seen people use before, so it's my first time using a side pro uh, profile technique. I uh, don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but in the meantime, uh, what we're going to look at today, just a quick uh, brief discussion, this is going to be a, so uh, a short subject um, on the matter of um, how to actually um, uh, incentivize yourself or get yourself to, to, to start exercising. Um, last week we touched on the barriers to exercise and today I'm going to look at what you can do to start. And actually um, often the, uh, the ways to uh, commence or, or, or start exercising are the simple things. All right, And the first thing is to do is to um, accept uh, that you may have a health problem, be it um, you're overweight, underweight, uh, musculoskeletal injuries, carrying too much body fat or um, carrying too much visceral fat, ectopic fat, poor car cardiovascular health. Um, so we're going to look at um, a simple thing to do first and that's to actually decide uh, not just the day but the actual time you're going to start exercising. So perfect example would be 7am Monday morning. That's assuming you start work at 9am. If you start work at 8am then let's say 6, 6.30. Now Sunday night uh, get your kit ready, get your shorts, your t-shirt, your leggings, your top, whatever it is you're going to wear, your trainers, and you get that kit out ready the night before. Uh, you, you put it at the, the end of your bed in your bedroom, or you put it um, in the way so you can't uh, start your day. You put it in the kitchen, somewhere where it's visible, not tucked away. Um, even if it's in a bag, you put it in the bag where you're going to have to see it first thing in the morning. You get up, you go to the gents, go to the ladies, drink your water, whatever you need, even if you black coffee, whatever, and put your kit on straight away. Don't, don't wait until a certain time of the day. So if you know that you've got time to exercise in the morning, you may only need 20 to 30 minutes, but start first thing. Don't wait until 8, 9, 10 o'clock if you know you can do it at 6, 6.30, 7 o'clock. All right, so uh, we've covered having a visual. So Sunday night, have your kit ready. Yeah, don't get dressed into anything else. Don't even put your dressing gown on. Put your sports kit or your gym kit, whatever you want to call it, on first thing in the morning. Drink your water, go to the toilet. Okay, then after that, if you're training at home, you know which room you're going to train in, whether it be a spare bedroom, the garage, the garden, the kitchen, where have you, dining room, anything like that. You've made your decision when you're going to train, you know, Monday, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., uh, and which room. And now you've already got your kit on. Okay, so, and that's where you're going to start. If you're going to train at your local leisure centre or your local gym, uh, my suggestion is you decide what time you're actually going to be training. Not what time you're going to think about leaving the house or what time you're going to arrive. Say to yourself, at 7 a.m., I'm going to be in the leisure centre, in my gym, or with my private trainer at 7 a.m., or 8 a.m., or 9 a.m., whatever time, and you're actually exercising at that time. So if you're on your own, set your watch. Um, and I, my advice is, when you first start exercising, it can be quite physically, mentally, uh, physiologically, even emotionally uh, tiring to start with. So don't give yourself you know, no one and a half hour, two hour workout. Give yourself a 30 minute, 35 minute workout. You're more than likely going to stick to that for a period of time and be consistent with it. So suggestions are you make your workout time frame, the bookend, short and quick. All right? Now, you, uh, an idea is to, uh, as well is to notify someone else, uh, your partner, your husband, your wife, your friend, your family, sister, work colleague, next door neighbor even, that you're going to start exercising and ask them to hold you accountable as well by sending you a text. Have you done it? Have you started it? Or question you the next day, just a light-hearted conversation. So don't just make yourself accountable. Ask someone to help you make yourself accountable. Give yourself uh, someone else to, someone else to um, join in with you, at least in spirit. Okay. Now, I would say for at least four weeks, make your workouts short and open up your lungs. What's important first is to get some cardiovascular health going. Let's get the heart and the lungs working properly. Let's get some good oxygen in and gases out. Uh, let's know what it's like to take in transport and utilize oxygen properly the way we should do. So um, look at what your maximal heart rate is. And the way we do this, we take a figure of 220. So that's figure, a starting figure of 220 and you subtract your current age. So if you're 40 years of age, 220 less 40, that's 180. So your maximum heart rate is around 180 beats per minute. You don't want to exercise at your maximum heart rate. If you're not injured, ill, or infirm, aim for about 75% of your maximum heart rate, so 130, 140. So if you're 40 years of age, just to recap, cardiovascular fitness, heart rate, 
you take a figure of 220, less your current age, if you're 40, that leaves 180. So aim to exercise at around 130, 140, even 150 uh, beats per minute. Yes, you can exercise to get your heart rate up to your maximum. In this case, it would be 180, but you can't sustain that throughout the whole 35, 60 minutes, okay? Not uh, as a beginner anyhow. Uh, the next thing to do is to always make sure you're hydrated before you start exercising. Um, so get your water down yeah, and hydrate throughout exercise as well. Don't start exercising and then find out that you've not drunk water since the previous day because you're going to spend that time drinking so much water really quickly into your workout that you start sloshing around and you start feeling like you've got a bloated stomach and that's because you've taken in a pint of water in the first 20 minutes. So hydrate the night before and hydrate before you start training and then you can sip water throughout. Keep it simple. All right, the next thing is um, if you're um, in a public area and you need to put your headphones on, put your ear plugs in or your headphones on and play the music that you want. The music, uh, whether, whatever genre it is, or even a, a YouTube or a podcast, play something in your ears that you look forward to listening to while you're exercising, okay? Um, so if you're in a public place. And likewise, if you're at home, play what you want. You don't need your ear pods in, you can do whatever, all right? Um, don't, um, don't spend too much time um, on trying to be technical. The first thing you need to do is to start r walking, running, cycling, rowing, or if you're in a leisure centre, then start swimming. Okay, the, the key here is, is actually movement first. You know, I wouldn't obsess about performance from day one because it's unlikely that you're a good performance athlete. You may be in the future, but not on day one. So the first thing is to get mobile, get the blood pumping around your body, get oxygen around your body. Know what it's like to feel, okay, uh, the sensations of being uh, moderately out of breath and bringing your heart rate up and knowing what it's like to have to stop and get your breath and hydrate. So, all right, now, um, if, you're, um, if you're new to exercise as well, um, what you should really do is make a note on, a, on your phone, on your smart pad, or just on a piece of paper somewhere, and make a note of how you feel after. And when I say feel, I mean physiologically feel. You know, do you feel good once you've had your shower and changed? Or did you, do you feel bored, poor? Do you feel unwell, almost nauseous? If that's the case, it's because you're new to exercise and your nervous system isn't used to that kind of stimulation. So make little adjustments, you know, train, you know, 10 minutes, like 15 minutes later, or train a bit easier. Ensure that you've slept uh, adequate enough. Make sure you've got enough glucose in the body from the food from the night before. If you're training at mid midday or 11 o'clock, make sure you've had your breakfast at seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. So, you know, just take away things that could le lead you to feeling really unwell. Um, so, and that's the time of day you train, whether you're hydrated or not, the intensity of your training workout. If you took a look at a, a scale of intensity, one being you're not doing anything, and 10 being it's too hard, you're so hard you're in hospital, you want your rate of perceived exertion, your RPE, to be at around seven, possibly seven out of 10, seven and a half, maybe even eight out of 10 for effort, and how hard it is. You don't want it to be a two, because it means you're, not, you're hardly doing anything, and certainly it shouldn't be a 10. Even Olympic athletes will struggle to train 10 out of 10 for repetitive, for, uh, for, um, for effort every time. All right, and finally, um, look at how many times a week you're gonna train. Ideally, you should start two to three times a week. Give yourself one to two days in between exercise. If you're just going out for walks, you can walk every day, five, six days a week. All right, half an hour walk, one hour walk. But if you're picking up weights and putting down weights or making some kind of resistance training, or you're running on a treadmill, give yourself time to recover. So get your stretches in, get your mobility work, get good sleep and good nutrition. Okay, that's how you start exercising. Make the decision why, make the decision when, and the time, and where, and stick to a plan. Write it down if you have to, make yourself accountable. You know, make an appointment with yourself. If you're 